Good afternoon folks, it's looking like another brew day in the kitchen. So today's experimental brew is going to be made from crushed pale malt, a few hops, a jar of clear honey, some Belgian ale and of course some spring water. So here's my lovely malt and I need to weigh out a kilo. So in that goes into the pan. I'm now topping the pan up with spring water and I'm using spring water because the tap water in Leeds is a bit chlorine. -y. So flame on and what I need to do is to let this heat up until it's at a simmer and then I'm going to turn it down and I'm going to let it simmer for about 90 minutes altogether and then I'm going to turn the heat off and leave it overnight. And what I really want to achieve from that is that all the natural sugars from within the malt are released into the water. Now I have to boil this with the lid off because uh, otherwise you get some off cabbagey smells and tastes um, which uh, if you leave the lid off they disappear but if you leave the lid on it traps it within um, the beer itself. So I'm just giving that a stir it looks like chicken soup and it smells like Ovaltine. Okay, this has been simmering away nicely now for over an hour. You can see the grains really broken down in size. Lots of that sugar has been released into the water. So I'm going to switch this off shortly. I'm going to leave it overnight to get all the rest of the sugars out that will come out. And then tomorrow I'm going to heat it back up and add some hops. Okay, so it's the next morning. My wort has cooled. It smells lovely and malty still. And what I need to do now is to reheat this and bring it back to a simmer with the hops. Okay, we're getting near a simmer. So I'm going to weigh out my hops. The hops that I'm using say but they've got a citrus peel tangerine floral flavour and aroma which I think will go nice with the honey so hopefully this is going to make a sweet and flavoursome beer. So I've weighed out 30 grams of hops and I'm now going to add those into the brew. As that just starts to simmer up and you can see that the pellets dissolve and break up straight away. So there we are that's the actual hops that I'm using, Cascade hops. Okay so that's now simmering so I'm going to leave that to simmer for about an hour. Okay so the wort has cooled a little I'm now going to transfer into the demijohn. Obviously I need to sieve Try and keep the grain out. So I'm just using the back of a ladle to push it. I don't want to push the grain through, I'm just trying to squeeze the liquid out. Okay, so that's the net result of me squeezing out the grain from this pan and this pan was full initially so you don't get a full damage on and obviously uh, there's some moisture which has evaporated and then there's some which is still trapped in the grain but I can't squeeze it anymore really. Um, it's, I wish I knew a, a good thing to do with all this grain but anyway what I now need to do is get the honey in there. So we're back in the sink and this is pretty straightforward here's my honey um, the water's still warm so it will dissolve the honey so I'm simply just going to put it upside down like that and let it all gloop in. So 
Okay, I've got the honey in. I've added a little bit more spring water in the top. And now I'm just agitating to get that honey mixed and so it dissolves. So I'm just going to add a little. So I've just added what's called wort, which is the mixture before the yeast goes in there, into here. This is a testing tube. And I'm going to use the testing tube to see what the gravity of the water is. This will help me to work out what the alcohol content of the beer is at the end of brewing. On the gravity it's looking about 55. Yeah, so it's about 55 on there. Right, now I've got to get my yeast in there. So I'm using Cross My Loof Brew Belgian Ale Yeast. I'm hoping that this will give me a nice strong beer. Uh, with a good hoppy and honey flavour. So I can smell the yeast, very yeasty. I'm going to put two teaspoonfuls, like so, in there. And that should be enough. And then I just want to use the back of the teaspoon to scrape the bits of yeast which are in the neck of the damage on. I don't want them doing any damage. So in order to help this yeast to activate, it asks you to agitate your mixture for a few minutes, which is easier said than done because it's quite heavy. But I'll just keep giving it a little shake around like this and hopefully some magic will happen. I've got the airlock in, water in the airlock. And I'm just waiting for some activation. I don't normally use this yeast, so I'm not sure how quick it uh, will be, but let's see. So just an hour later, and it's popping away nicely. So now I'm, I'm just going to leave this and see how it goes. And there it goes on the right, bubbling fiercely. This is about five hours later. Good evening folks, it's another brew day in the kitchen. Today I'm going to be racking off and clearing my honey beer. So here is that beer. Don't be alarmed at the green on the demijohn. It's not in the beer. So that was where the, um, when the foam came from the yeast initially, that's where it ended up. And you can see at the bottom there's some sediment in there. But the reason I'm doing this today is that after only nine days, this is what's happened in the airlock. Nothing at all. It's just stopped now. It's been popping away nicely. It slowed down yesterday and today nothing. So it is definitely now an opportunity, I think, to take it out of that demijohn, get it into a clean demijohn and to try and clear it a little bit. So initially I wasn't going to try and clear this beer because everybody's used to drinking cloudy beers these days. You know, it doesn't have to be a clear beer. But I just thought I'm going to give it a whirl because it's the first beer from grain that I've tried to clear. And I don't know what it's going to be like. So this is, a, you know, it's still an experiment. Everything's an experiment. I'm still learning as I'm doing. So we'll just see what happens. So airlock out. Oh, give me a little shower. Have a look inside. It's a nice colour. Siphon tube in, and now the fun bit. I should have caught a bit of that in my mouth. So you can see where my siphon tube is there. I don't want it to go into the sediment. I want to try and get above the sediment. I want to try and get as much of this out as possible. I'm hoping for at least four 750ml bottles. I don't think I'll get five, but if I do, it's a bonus. I've got to say, it smells really beery as well, which is a good sign. So I was kind of disappointed when it stopped fermenting after nine days, but I've never used this yeast before. It's Belgian ale yeast from uh, Cross My Loof, I think they were called. Um, and I don't know what I should expect really out of it, you know, because it's the first time I've brewed beer from grain with that yeast. Um, I've been using Lalvin Champagne yeast before, but apparently that's not got the right profile for beer, so I need to 
you know, expand my yeast portfolio. So we're getting near the sediment now. I've got a little amount coming up, but I don't want to waste too much beer either. And then the bubbles in the tube and that's done. So looking at this, I'm definitely going to get four bottles out of it. Hopefully five, but we'll see. I'm just going to have a little taster because it smells so good. I'm really intrigued. Just a little nifter. Raw beer. Very slightly sparkling. Quite a grainy texture. Drier than I expected. I'm not immediately getting the honey. But it tastes pretty good. To say that this is the first beer I've tasted that I've done from grain, I'm actually quite impressed. Blowing me on trumpet now. Not disappointed in the slightest. So what I'm going to try and do now is I'm going to try and clear it. So I'm using clear it wine finings and you put these through in two stages. So I'm going to put um, some bottle A in first and then in here is bottle B and some of this goes in an hour later. So bottle A, a few drips, just goes in a bit more. That's it. And then what you do is you give it a good slosh around so it mixes nicely. Do you know what? It is Belgian ale yeast and it's just reminded me of a Belgian ale that I've had before. I can't think what the ale was called but it has a picture of monks drinking on the uh, label and I think any beer that's got a picture of drunk monks on the front has got to be a good beer, hasn't it? So if this tastes anything like that, I'll be chuffed to bits. Airlock back in and now I need to leave this for an hour before adding finings B to it. So I'll catch you in an hour. It's one hour later and you can see that findings A has already had an impact. It's dragged some of the uh, grain down into the sediment. So now I need to add findings B and shake it all up again. So findings B goes into the demijohn, similar amount as findings A. And then once again, like with findings A, you've got to give it a good agitation, shake it around, get it all in there. Right, I think that'll do. So we'll come back to this in a couple of days time and hopefully it will be ready for bottling. Good afternoon from the kitchen folks. It's honey beer bottling day. There's the honey beer which I cleared the other day. And it's not completely cleared, but it's definitely dragged some of the sediment down to the bottom. There's a little bit of cloudiness to it, but I think in the bottles that that might well clear. And there are my bottles, cleaned and sterilised and ready to go. And my hydrometer and flask also. So bottles now emptied. I've got my filter in my funnel to catch any bits of trub that might be in there. It's time to get that bung out. Get the siphoning tube in. And here goes the fun bit. And we're off to a great start. Smells really beery. Good head forming already. So I just want to keep the bottom of the siphon tube away from the sediment in the bottom of the demijohn. So I've done well to avoid the sediment. I've got four full bottles. I've got some in the hydrometer flask and I've got a little bit in the bottom of this bottle so we'll call this one a sample for tonight. And I'm now going to take the gravity of the final product. So 
So that has finished on a final gravity of 1008. So we need to see what that works out at then in terms of alcohol percentage. So the original gravity was 1.055. I'm going to minus from that the final gravity, which was 1.008. Which equals 0.047, and then I multiply that by 131.25 equals a final alcohol percentage of 6.16%, and I'm very happy with that. Very happy with that. Back of the net. Four green bottles standing on my sink. I've got the bungs in here, they're plastic ones, they've been softening in hot water which makes them easier to put into the bottles. However, before I put the bungs in, I've got these carbonation drops. I've never tried these before, but I need to add three per 750ml bottle, and that will give it a secondary fermentation, which should hopefully give the beer carbonation. So when I pour it, when I eventually have it, after it's bottle conditioned, it will hopefully be fizzy. Well, not fizzy, but it will have some, it will have a bit of life in it, some bubbles. That's what I want, and a head when I pour it. So these are the carbonation drops, just like little sugar lumps. So one, two, and three, and the same in each bottle. This is definitely going to build up some pressure in the bottles, which is where the carbonation comes from. Okay. Right, so my lids are nice and soft and warm and clean, even more importantly. So in they go, so simply push inwards, holding the bottle in place and that's one in. That's two, three, there. So I've got the bungs in place, but I haven't finished yet because now I need to add the cages because if I don't add the cages with the carbonation, these are going to be flying. I'm going to have bottle bombs and rockets in the tops. So. Let's get these cages in place. All of these cages are recycled from the same sparkling wine, champagne and Prosecco bottles that I'm using just here. These are just bottles which have already had something in, which have been cleaned and delabeled. So one completed. Two. Three. Numero quattro. I'm so happy with that. Cheers, folks. Actually tastes really, really good. I can't wait to try this once it's had its second fermentation and carbonated in the bottle. Good evening, folks. It's a nervous opening of the Belgian honey ale tonight in the kitchen. So first things first, I need to take the cage off. <sighs> Let's see how it pours. Oh, I can smell that beer. It smells really good. Do you know what? For my third ever brew from grain, I am not disappointed. It actually smells lovely. It really smells like honey and it smells like a Belgian ale. It's the yeast that's done that. It's got the fizz. It's actually, I'm sorry, but I've got to say it, it's bloody delicious. I 
I'm very, very happy with that. Let's just pour a bit more. That is not bad at all. I am actually very, very pleased. So, Belgian honey ale, 6.2%. Been in the bottle a month. Cheers, folks. I think this is a result. I'm going to try and make this one again, but I'm going to try and make it even better. The film that you've just watched is a Moss Home and Garden production. You can find more by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk I'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel and for watching my films. It really is very much appreciated. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the home and garden films which I upload. You can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk Please click on the red subscribe button. When you've done that, a little bell will appear. If you press that also, then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming, then you might also like my travel channel, which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or typing www.mosstravel.tv. Again, if you could subscribe to that channel, it would be hugely appreciated. If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook, then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden and you will find the page. If you like the page, then you will get future updates on there. And if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography, as well as some stories, then my username is Stu Moss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. If you'd like to connect on Twitter, then my username is at Stuart Moss. And if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue, please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much for supporting my channel, for watching my films. I do appreciate it. I'd just like you all to have a great day.